On today's show, the Tesla Model 3 is finally here. A Tesla Model S travels a really, really long way and Hyperloop completes its next big step. These stories and more coming up next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 49% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, a professional musician turned electric vehicle crusader, and I'm here to bring Kiwis a weekly roundup of the biggest news stories around the world in relation to cleaner, greener transport. As always, thanks for joining us. Last Friday, Tesla began deliveries of its Model 3 electric car, handing over some 30 Model 3 cars to employees and friends of Tesla. Tesla CEO Elon Musk also shared with us the specs and final expected range of the entry-level Model 3, 350 Ks or so, plus details of what will and won't come standard. Kiwi pricing hasn't been announced yet, but expect to pay an additional 12,000 Kiwi dollars or thereabouts for the longer range battery pack, which gives 40% more range, and up to 81,000 Kiwi dollars for a fully laden Model 3. And while Model 3 isn't suitable for everyone, Musk did confirm earlier this week that Tesla has changed its plans on its next car the Model Y, basing the car heavily off Model 3 existing technology so that it can bring its mass market affordable SUV to market as soon as possible. No details are available yet, but expect this car by 2020. Hyperloop One, one of two startups trying to commercialize Hyperloop travel, announced the successful completion of its first full-scale pod test this week, accelerating its XP1 prototype capsule to a top speed of 192 miles per hour, that's 308 kph inside of its aptly named DevLoop just outside of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA. There's still a long way to go before Hyperloop travel can be commercialized, but this successful test, the first of its kind, does certainly move Hyperloop from the hypothetical to the technically possible. So I, for one, am super excited to see where the next engineering project for this goes. Not so long ago, Tesla CEO Elon Musk said the Tesla Model S 100D, with the right driver, could easily travel more than 1,000 kilometers on a charge. And of course, there's been a slew of Tesla fans eager to prove that point, with 901 kilometers being the longest distance achieved on a single charge until this week, when an Italian Tesla Model S 100D owner managed 1,078 kilometers on a full charge. That's just shy of 600 miles. While it's an amazing achievement, it's perhaps not one you're going to want to replicate yourself, as the average speed for this record attempt was just 37 kph, or 23 miles per hour. Yes, it's possible, but you'll probably save time just stopping to charge and driving a lot faster. Over the past six months or so, there's been a palpable change in the way electric cars are being viewed by mainstream automakers. And this week, we got another example of that when we heard that Audi is reportedly working to cut 10 billion euro off its operating costs so that it can push full speed ahead with its electric vehicle programs. Although I should note here that Audi's parent company Volkswagen, with its CEO Matthias Muller, is also reportedly facing a massive backlash against its newfound EV push, as members of its board aren't quite as EV friendly as its new CEO is. Back to Audi. Apparently, the majority of the money saved will come from slashing other research and development programs. Yet, with the luxury car market looking like it will be the first to become fully electrified, there's really no time to spare. And if it wants a market share, Audi has to act now. Fiat Chrysler CEO Sergio Marchione is no fan of electric cars, and if you've watched this show for any length of time, you'll know that he's poo-pooed plug-in cars a lot, both at his role at FCA, but also as his role at CEO of Ferrari. Well, this week, hell froze over when Marchione confirmed that sister brand Maserati will become electrified by 2022. Yes, you heard me. Maserati, one of many Italian brands known for its large engines and low gas mileage, is going to start using electric drivetrains. But before you get all excited, I should point out that he uses the word electrified rather than electric, which does indicate that we could be seeing hybrid rather than plug-in hybrid or full electric cars. But it's a step in the right direction, right? After winning the inaugural FIA Formula E Championship title, only to lose out to rival Sebastian Buemi last year, Lucas Degrassi was awarded the Formula E Drivers' Championship title for the 2016-2017 season last weekend at the season's double-headed finale in Montreal, Canada. While Degrassi's final race wasn't all that spectacular, he finished seventh overall, 
He fared far better during the penultimate race held the day before, earning both pole position and finishing first to give him enough points to claim victory in the Drivers' Championship. Congratulations to Degrassi, and here's to the next Formula E season, complete with some pretty big changes that should make the race series even more exciting. Less than a year after announcing its solar roof products, Tesla has begun installing solar roofs at homes of its employees and investors. And as we learned during Tesla's Q2 earnings call, the roof tiles Tesla is using at the moment are being built at its Fremont production facility. But production should shift to solar roof tiles at Tesla's Buffalo production facility before the end of the year. Just like Model 3, employees are effectively helping Tesla iron out the kinks by being customer guinea pigs before a wider public rollout happens. But with Tesla now producing and installing everything from solar roofs to battery storage systems and electric cars, the Tesla ecosystem is starting to look pretty darned awesome. It's small, unusually tall for its size, and looks a little like a poached egg if you look at it wrong. But it was also the first mass-produced electric car of its generation to go on sale, beating the Nissan LEAF to market by quite a distance. But after more than seven years of being on sale, Mitsubishi is finally pulling the iMeV out of the US market just as it's being phased out elsewhere in the world. Sales have been pretty terrible over the last few years due to its small range and 16 kilowatt hour battery pack, but I for one have a soft spot in my heart for this quirky, fun little runabout. Thank you, Imyev, and here's hoping that you'll be replaced with something totally awesome, although Mitsubishi remains really tight-lipped on that one, and I'm kind of worried that you won't be. And finally, as I covered at the start of the show, Tesla began delivering Model 3 last week, with most of its early cars going to Tesla employees. But one Model 3 ended up going to longtime investor Steve Uvertsen, who published a little video this week showcasing a hidden Easter egg in the Model 3's navigation system that might make space fans smile. A tweak that lets you drive your Model 3 on Mars. The car turns into a Mars rover and the GPS works. It just places you on Mars instead of Earth. And while it's not useful per se, it does show us just where Elon Musk's heart really is, the red planet. And given what we've seen of Musk thus far, I think he's going to get there. And on that space-tastic note, it's the end of another Ecotech show. But before I go completely, I just want to give a plug to our friends over at EV World NZ, an electric car industry conference and public show taking place at the Vodafone Event Center in Auckland on September 8th and September 9th, with the industry conference set for Friday the 8th and the public expo set for Saturday the 9th, right at the start of International Drive Electric Week, you won't want to miss it. Best of all, the public expo on Saturday is free, so make sure you follow the link below to find out more. That's it. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness, so make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. In the meantime, enjoy your weekend, make sure you do something fun, and don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.